It's not very often that we get to see a lot of changes and improvements on a car without it looking radically different from its predecessors. For example, take a look at any of the popular models that have been updated in the recent past. The Honda City, uh, the Hyundai i20 and even the Tata Safari. They all look entirely new and different than what they used to. Well, that's the tradition anyway when it comes to introducing a new product. Maruti, however, has taken an evolutionary approach with the design of this new Baleno, despite it being a completely new car underneath. I mean, it's got a new engine that breathes better, the interior is all new, the feature list has gone up big time, uh, there's a new cost-effective automatic gearbox and, to top it all, the chassis and suspension components have been heavily worked on. The new Baleno then really is all new and one simply cannot pass it off as a facelift or an update. It's more of a generation change, but the question is, is it a solid choice altogether? Well, in this review, I'll talk you through its design, its interior, test out its features and take it for a drive and see whether putting the AMT in the Baleno is the right way to go. My name is Sagar and you're watching Carwale. Like I said, the new Baleno's design is evolutionary and if the latest rip is any indication, you know it's going to play safe and smart with the looks. And the Baleno does start to look different and more upmarket as soon as you take a closer look. I mean, look at these daytime running lights. Uh, usually you have a thin LED strip, but in here, you have these three L-shaped individual lights, which look very attractive, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of attention as you drive along. Uh, moving on, the other thing that I really like about the new Baleno's design is how wide the overall stance looks, and that's simply because of the stronger crease that runs along the shoulder line all the way till the tail light. And you can really notice this, I mean the wide stance, when you view the car head on. At the back, the tail lamps also have the same tri-LED pattern to match the headlamps. The whole cluster, in fact, is all new. It's much sharper and the lower half now extends to the tailgate. Lastly, you get a new dual-tone design for the 16-inch alloy wheels on the top-spec model. The rest of the design bits, like the tailgate and the bumper, aren't radically different and that's hardly a bad thing because overall, this new model looks quite upmarket and it's got that white stance with sharp design elements while retaining all the familiar Baleno look that we have grown to like. Inside, there is no shortage of design changes and little improvements here and there. Now, as you can see, the Baleno has finally caught up to the current design trends and you have this uh, floating infotainment display which wasn't there in the earlier car. Then you also have this new uh, steering wheel design with a flat bottom. Now, when I say new, it's not really new because we have seen this in the Swift and the Desire. And lastly, uh, in case you haven't realized, uh, the dual tone upholstery in this car is not the usual black and beige, but uh, black and blue. So that's different. So why blue and not the usual beige, you may ask? Well, that's exactly what we asked Maruti and uh, they said they ran a survey and the feedback that they got was uh, that most people associate this shade of blue uh, with a certain sense of uh, luxury and premiumness which is why you see uh, this new, entirely new shade of uh, black and blue with the new Baleno. The whole cabin in fact is now a lot more cohesive in its design and how all the bits are linked to each other. For example, the narrow central air vents feel decent to operate and go well with the toggle switches for the AC temperature and blower speeds. The analog dials for the instrument cluster are pretty much the same as before except for chrome ring surrounds, but the multi-information display between them is now more comprehensive. Before we get to all the new features in here, let's talk about the seating and how comfortable they are. First of all, the upholstery is all fabric and while you do miss not having leather or leatherette option, the front seat is really good on anti support and back support. You'll also notice the extra side bolstering, which is great because the front seats on the old car felt very flat and they would struggle to hold you in place in the corners in case you decided to go fast. Okay, so moving to the back seat. We have never had any complaints other than the helmed in feeling one got because of the all black interior. Unfortunately, things haven't changed here in that regard. Nevertheless, there is plenty of room for somebody my size. Now I'm 5 foot 8 and I have more than enough headroom and legroom. And I wouldn't really mind spending a lot of time in here over a long journey. Uh, helping matters, of course, are these rear AC vents that you didn't get in the old car. 
Uh, what I'm truly missing though is a rear armrest that you still don't get uh, in the new Baleno. But the only upshot of this uh, is that the middle seating is actually comfortable when there's no uh, armrest because the contouring is just as good as the other two seats and it's not as hard. So you're like properly comfortable and it doesn't give you a backache basically. As for the features, the new Baleno has the kind of equipment that we haven't seen in any Maruti so far. Take the heads up display for instance, which is far from basic. I mean, other than the speed, it also displays engine RPM, fuel economy and what gear you are in. Another segment first feature is the 360 degree camera, which other than the static overhead image also displays an immersive view of the surroundings in 3D. While all that is great. I for one am really interested in trying out this entirely new infotainment system that Maruti has developed for the Baleno and of course the future models from the Nexa lineup. First impressions are really good, I mean the user interface is simple and unlike Maruti's other infotainment units, also easy on the eye. The touch response is also good if not the best in class. I believe the i20's infotainment system is quicker to respond with an even simpler UI. All in all, it's a good departure from Maruti's existing system and you also get custom voice commands and dedicated sound modes by Arkemis for the 6-speaker audio system. Other noteworthy features include rear AC vents, a sliding front armrest, cruise control, LED fog lights, auto-dimming IR VM and both Type-C and Type-A charging ports at the rear. There is however some stuff missing even in the most expensive version. Things like wireless charging, ambient lighting, rear armrest and sunroof are still not offered here. In terms of safety, which plays such an important role in buying decisions these days, the entry-level variants get two airbags, whereas Zeta and Alpha come with as many as six airbags as standard. ABS with EBD, Isofix child seat mounts and reverse parking sensors are standard as well, while the AMT versions get ESP and hill hold function. Now even though the new Baleno hasn't been NCAP crash tested yet, Maruti tells us that the car has performed well in their internal crash testing. This is perhaps down to the fact that the brand has reinforced the hard tech platform that underpins the new Baleno with thicker steel all around. So here we are finally driving the new Baleno with an AMD gearbox. So the big question is, has the addition of this cost-effective transmission diluted the driving experience? Well, mostly no, and let me explain. Now, you see the CVT gearbox in the old Baleno was never really the first choice for anyone looking for a sporty driving experience. And uh, frankly, the whole point of uh, CVT gearbox is to uh, deliver the power to the wheels in the most seamless and smoothest way possible and the Baleno's gearbox did that very well. In comparison, the AMT gearbox in this new Baleno uh, is naturally not as uh, refined or sophisticated, but then you know what, it does the job just fine. It is in fact the finest version of the AMT tech that I've seen in any Maruti so far. The gear shifts are very smooth on par throttle and the best part is that uh, you don't experience any of that uh, head knot that you get uh, while accelerating from first to second or uh, second to third. I'll just pull over and I'll shift to first and now you'll see me accelerating from first to second see there is hardly any uh, jerks or uh, you don't have that uh, forward and backward movement so which is good like Maruti has come a long way uh, when it comes to AMT tech and it shows the AMT gearbox then is surprisingly seamless and also quite intuitive you also get a manual override for added control. Naturally, the gear shifts aren't as quick as a DCT or a torque converter, but you can use the manual mode for a better sense of involvement and driving fun. Speaking of which, the 1.2 litre dual jet engine that the Baleno now gets is quite high on character. It's extremely refined at low revs, is peppy enough for daily duties and makes a nice noise when you rev it. Like all BS6 K series engines, it doesn't mind being revved but it's just that you have to push it till 3.5-4000 RPM to make quick progress. What's also worth mentioning is that the new Baleno has gained around 60 kilos of weight and Maruti tells us it's because of the heavier engine with the start-stop system, new features inside the cabin and all the reinforcements done to the hardtech platform. 
Dynamically, a lot has changed too. The suspension setup is comparatively softer than before and there's more travel. The steering has been tuned for better returnability and lastly, the brakes are bigger. On the road, all of these changes add up to deliver a more grown-up driving experience. Don't get me wrong, the Baleno is still quite fun to drive, but now there's an additional layer of maturity to how it rides, handles and stops. So what's our final verdict then on the new Baleno with the AMT gearbox? Well, let's address the biggest talking point first and that's the gearbox itself. Now, I have to say that moving on from CVT to AMT does feel like a big step down, especially when it comes to driving convenience and smoothness. But then it makes complete economic sense for Maruti because the old CVT was uh, always imported, the pricing on the Baleno Automatic was on the higher side. And because AMT technology is relatively simpler and so cost effective, the new Baleno Automatic is actually cheaper than the old CVT model. And that's despite all the additions in the safety features and equipment. So if you think about it, it's a total win-win situation. In fact, ex-showroom prices for the AMT Baleno start at Rs 7.69 lakhs, going all the way till 9.49 lakhs for the Alpha trim that you see here. At these prices, the Baleno is way more reasonable than the Volkswagen Polo and the Hyundai i20. Is it a better automatic premium hatch though? Let us know in the comments if you would like to see a full-blown comparison test between all three. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel if you like what you see. Thanks for watching.